Tiwari. Welcome to the latest edition of Sports Connect. I am Megha, your host for the show. It's so good to host you all each Saturday here on DD Sports, where we bring to you the top trends and news from the sporting world that are hot on the internet every week. But before starting, please note you can track us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also we can be accessed through YouTube. Coming up. Let's take a quick wrap of what was hot on Facebook this week. Formula One has introduced the Halo cockpit protection device next year following a meeting of the sports technical bosses in Monaco on Friday. Halo was chosen over Red Bull's AeroScreen solution after technical directors met with the FIA's Charlie Whiting to evaluate the two proposals. The Halo design features a central strut in front of the driver's head, supporting a curved protection rim of the titanium-strengthened carbon fibre above. From now, teams will have to incorporate the Halo into their 2017 car designs alongside a raft of regulation changes that were signed off at the end of April. The recent push for more cockpit protection follows two high-profile deaths in motorsports last year. Jules Binaki passed away as a result of head injuries sustained in an accident at the 2014 Japanese Grand Prix and IndyCar driver Justin Wilson died after being hit by debris during a race at Pocono last year. However, the FIAs has been conducting research into head protection for several years after a loose wheel in a Formula 2 race killed Henry Surtees in 2009. Cristiano Ronaldo did it again for Real Madrid stepping forward to score a penalty and impose another devastating loss in a Champions League final on a rival Atletico Madrid. For the second time in three finals, the biggest game in club soccer ended with Ronaldo sealing the victory. Ronaldo's decisive spot kick in the shootout gave Real Madrid a 5-3 victory on penalties following a 1-1 draw after extra time in Saturday's final. Two years ago, the Portuguese superstar's penalty had sealed a 4-1 extra-time win over Atletico and prompted the first of his provocative celebrations. Spanish basketball player Pau Gasol is considering not playing in the Olympics because of the Zika virus. The Spanish basketball player said there is too much uncertainty about the situation in Brazil and anyone going to Rio de Janeiro for the games should think about whether it's worth the risk. The Chicago Bulls player said other Spanish athletes have also expressed their concerns about the virus and are also considering skipping the games. The catch, and that is his 300th. Sri Lankan bowler Rangana Hirat reached 300 wickets in tests after picking Steve Finn on day two of the second test against England. The 38 year old, who has been the backbone of Sri Lanka's spin attack following Muttaya Murlidharan's exit, has taken 16 years to reach the landmark. After dismissing Alex Hales on the same day, Hirat went past English spinner Derek Underwood's record for the second most number of wickets in tests by a left-arm spinner after the Kiffy star Daniel Vittori. Murli Dharan tops the list of most number of wickets, 795 for Sri Lanka, followed by Chimanda Vas, 355. Erath is third on the list and below him stands the deadly pacer Lasit Malinga.
delighted, and so he should be. What a test debut. This is a magical feeling. It's gone to 100 at Lords for England. He's running hard, that's his 250, a quick single, he's home and dry. Four runs, square the wicket for Alistair Cook. He becomes England's most prolific test batsman. And he's got there at long last, 10,000 test match runs for Alistair Cook. The left-handed opening batsman was 36 runs shot before the start of the series. He was dismissed on 16 in the first test against the Lankans and got out on 15 in the first innings of the second test. Cook finally reached the mark in the second innings with the boundary of his pads and raised his bat in celebration. With this, he became only the 12th player and the first from England to reach the milestones. Starting things with the Indian Premier League, which concluded in Bangalore this Sunday where David Warner led Hyderabad to a maiden Indian Premier League title after the bowlers derailed Royal Challengers Bangalore's chase to fashion an eight-run victory. Early in the chase, Gale smashed five sixes and three fours in no time to score a 50 of just 25 balls as he took RCB to 59 for no loss after power playovers. Along with Kohli, Gale powered RCB to 100 run marks in nine overs to set a good platform. More in this report. And it's a yes by Maxim! Best batting side in the tournament. we now taking on the best bowling side in the tournament to get 209 of the 20 overs. Here's the real one. What a view. And it's time for BK. And there's plenty of swing around. As Chris Gale and Virat Kohli's 100-run stand went in vain as Sunrisers Hyderabad registered a narrow 8-run victory to win their maiden Indian Premier League title at M. Chinnaswan Stadium. Royal Challengers Bangalore finished 8 runs short of a massive 209-run target as they managed 200 for 7 in their 20 overs to suffer their third defeat in three finals. Chasing a huge target, RCB needed their dynamic trio, Gale, Kohli and A.B. de Villiers, to click in unison, but it was only partially fulfilled in the end. Gale was in his elements as he smacked eight sixes and four boundaries for his 76 or 38 balls and put on 114 runs for the opening wicket with his skipper Kohli in 10.3 overs. Kohli too contributed 54, but the failure of D Villiers and wickets at regular intervals in the later stage left them short. For Hyderabad, David Bonner scored his ninth 50 of the season and Ben Cutting produced a match-winning all-round show to guide them to a famous win. Our first-time winners of Vivo IPL, they are champions in 2016. Next, what was hot this week was England's test captain Alistair Cook, who created history on Monday as he became the youngest batsman to breach the 10,000 run landmark in test cricket, breaking an 11 year old record held by Indian batting legend Sachin Tendulkar. Cook achieved the feat at the age of 31 years, 5 months, and 7 days on day 4 of the second test against Sri Lanka at Test LA 3. <laughs> This is a magical feeling. It's gone to 100 at Lords for England. Yes, he's running hard. That's his 250, a quick single. He's home and dry. Four runs square the wicket for Alistair Cook. He becomes England's most prolific test batsman. He's got there at long last. 10,000. Test match runs for Alistair Cook. The left-handed opening batsman was 36 runs shot before the start of the series. He was dismissed on 16 in the first test against the Lankans and got out on 15 in the first innings of the second test. 
Cook finally reached the mark in the second innings with the boundary off his pads and raised his bat in celebration. With this, he became only the 12th player and the first from England to reach the milestone, joining an elite list of players considered to be some of the greatest the game has ever seen. Cook also broke Rahul Dravid's record of being the quickest to reach 10,000 runs in terms of the number of days from debut. Of those 11 men who have crossed this threshold before him, only Sunil Gavaskar was an opening batsman. Gavaskar has only 10,122 runs, so the England captain will soon be the highest run-scoring opening batsman of all times. Cook is the 12th batsman to get the 10,000 runs in 10th, after Tendulkar, Ricky Ponting, Jack Kalis, Rahul Dravid, Kumar Sangakara, Ryan Lara, Shivnarayan Chandrapal, Mahila Jayavardhane, Alan Bodder, Steve Waugh and Sunil Gavaskar. Cook made his test debut against India at Nagpur in March 2006 and scored 60 and 104 not out. He grew into the role of opener before taking over the test captaincy from Andrew Strauss in late 2012. As captain leading into the Headingley test, 3,751 of Cook's overall runs had come as captain. The 10 centuries and 18 half centuries at an average of 46.88. Before moving further, let's slip into a short break. On the other side, lots more coming up. Welcome back to your favorite show, Sports Connect. You can also watch the repeat telecast of the show tomorrow, Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Also, you can YouTube us at www.youtube.com slash Doordarshan Sports. Last week, 58th ABU Sports Conference and Associated Meeting were held in Colombo, Sri Lanka from 28th to 30th May. ADG DD Sports, PK Subhash, was also present at the meeting where he shared his experience and discussed best efforts and initiatives for developing mutual cooperation between the members. Take a snap tour of this important meet. Now, as always, some sporting facts for you. Today, we have some key facts from the Rio Olympics 2015. So, here you go. Did you know that about 1,40,000 people are needed to host the Games in August? Of those, 90,000 will be employees 
with a further 50,000 volunteers. Did you know that the slogan of the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro is Live Your Passion? Did you know that it will be the first Olympic Games ever held in South America? Slipping into a short break. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Now it's time for our sports quiz. Today's question is Who was the first Indian to win the World Amateur Billiards title? And your options are Geet Sethi, Wilson Jones, Michael Pereira, and Manoj Kothari. Get in touch with us with your answers using hashtag DDSportsQuiz on Twitter and on Facebook. You can drop your answers in the comment box. <laughs> Now bringing to you our next segment on this day in sports. So here is what happened on this day in the world of sports. On this day in 1979, Sri Lanka forfeit ICC trophy game versus Israel for political reasons. On this day in 2005, Iron Bell becomes the first Englishman since Les M.A. 70 years ago to score 100 runs in a test match before lunch in the second test match of Bangladesh tour. It was on this day in 2008, the Detroit Red Wings beat the Pittsburgh Penguins in Game 6 to win the Stanley Cup. The Red Wings won the Game 3-2 to capture their 11th Stanley Cup in franchisee history. On this day in 2010, the Williams sisters win their 12th Grand Slam doubles title and second at the French Open. With the victory, the sisters now hold all four women's doubles Grand Slams. On this day in 2014, Japan becomes the first side to qualify for the 2014 FIFA World Cup with a 1-1 draw against Australia at Saitama Stadium. It's now time for the video of the week. So here is the week's top trending video whipped from the internet. Well, now it's time for our Olympic special segment, Rio Connect. This week, International Boxing Association came up with a historic decision to allow professional boxers 
to compete in the Olympic Games. At a meeting at Lausanne in Switzerland on Wednesday, 95% of the delegates approved the proposal to allow boxers from all organizations to participate in AIBA competitions. The organization said its decision supports the IOC Agenda 2020, which seeks to ensure that the world's best athletes are eligible to compete at the Olympic Games. The decision brings boxing in line with the majority of sports, which allows professional athletes to compete at the Olympic Games. <music> Meanwhile, Indian star boxer MC Mericom has been given a ray of hope to make her dream come true at the 2016 Olympics. India has now decided to seek a wildcard entry for the five-time world champion. This has come days after the 33-year-old boxer lost in the second round of the World Boxing Championships in Asana, Kazakhstan, which was the final qualifying tournament for the female boxers. On the other side, Indian boxing sensation Vijayendra Singh confirmed that he is in no mood for Rio 2016 Olympics. He dismissed the same by saying that it will be difficult to prepare for such a mega event at such a short notice. Commonwealth Games silver medalist L. Devendra Singh and Asian Games bronze medalist Vikas Krishan will be spearheading a ninth strong Indian team picked for the AIBA World Olympic Qualifying Tournament starting on June 16 at Baku, Azerbaijan. India will not field any boxer in the 56 kg division in this event as World Championship bronze medalist Shiva Thapa has already qualified in the category at the Asian Olympic qualifiers in March. Shiva is in fact the only Indian to have booked a rear berth so far in boxing. The world qualifiers are perhaps the last opportunity left for Indian boxers to make the cut for Rio Games in August. And now shifting our focus towards Olympic torch relay. The Olympic flame is journeying towards Northeast Brazil just as the season for country festival gets underway. Also last week, Rio 2016 launched the official song of the Olympic torch relay. The song, Life of a Traveller, penned by Brazilian legend Luis Gonzaga, has become the anthem of the Olympic torch relay for Rio 2016. Originally a tribute to the emotions of the churning over land, a Brazilian classic has been given a modern twist to become the official song of the torch relay. Check out some of the highlights. Now it's time to say goodbye. We'll catch you all next week, same day, same time, only on your favorite sports channel, TV Sports. But before leaving, let's take time to wish a very happy birthday to the War Brothers. Stephen Markbaugh, who took the cricket world by storm with their stellar performances for the Australian team, were respected by competitors and teammates alike.
Born July 2nd, 1965, Stephen Roger Wall and Mark Edward Wall are perhaps the most famous cricketing twins of all time. Steve, nicknamed Iceman, and Mark, nicknamed Junior, are two of the most distinguished cricketers to emerge from Australia. The twins played a colossal 296 tests and 569 one-day international ODIs between them, scoring a combined 35,025 international runs. Mark had the more distinguished ODI record, but Steve was miles ahead of his brother in the test arena. Moreover, Steve captained Australia with distinction, leading them to the 1999 World Cup win and being at the helm of 15 of Australia's 16 successive test victories. Mark was also renowned for his slip fielding and, by common consensus, is regarded as the greatest ever slip fielder. He held the record for most catches in tests by a non-wicket keeper with 181 catches. Well played. Meanwhile, for the updates from the sports world, you can track us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Tweet us at DD Sports Channel. Like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Sudarshan Sports. And for some action pictures, Instagram us at dd.sports. For videos, subscribe to us on YouTube at www.youtube slash Sudarshan Sports. Take care and goodbye.